Hey everyone, today I'm going to introduce proteins. Proteins are very important. I can't stress to you enough the importance of proteins in your cells. Proteins are not just some dietary supplement uh, that you need to live. Uh, your cells need to produce the correct proteins so that your cells can function. Um, basically, without proteins, your cells wouldn't grow, your cells wouldn't divide, uh, your DNA wouldn't be copied, uh, things wouldn't be broken down, uh, things wouldn't be built, uh, movement wouldn't happen, uh, things that we generally need for a cell to function, those things wouldn't be happening. In fact, the entire reason uh, you have DNA is because the genes uh, code for the proteins. Uh, a gene is the information for a protein, how to build a particular protein. So for example, the insulin gene is just the information for how to put together the insulin protein. And then the insulin protein has a job, it goes on and it regulates blood sugar. So proteins have all sorts of jobs in the cell. And the protein is a biomolecule, and it is also a macromolecule. Why? Because it is made up of monomers called amino acids, and those monomers get linked together to form the polymer, which is called a protein or a polypeptide. Uh, the amino acids actually have a very specific structure, and here's the structure. You've got a carboxyl group, which, remember what a carboxyl group looks like? You've got a carboxyl group. Every amino acid has a carboxyl group. Every amino acid has a amino group. And actually, that is why they call them amino acids, by the way. They call them amino acids because all of the building blocks, the amino acids for proteins, they all have amino groups and carboxyl groups. Keep in mind, do you remember the functional group carboxyl? What's its property? Its property is that it is an acidic functional group. So that's why it's called an amino acid. Amino because you have an amino group acid because you have a carboxyl group. Carboxyl groups make you an acidic molecule. Also, all amino acids have a carbon in the middle of the two. So you've got a carboxyl group, amino group, a carbon in the middle, and it has a special name. It's called the alpha, the alpha carbon. And that carbon always has at least one hydrogen. You see, one hydrogen attached. So this is what's known as the backbone of an amino acid. Uh, why is it called the backbone of an amino acid? Well, because all of the 20 amino acids that make up your proteins contain this. They've got the carboxyl group, the amino group, an alpha carbon, and a hydrogen. So you might be wondering, well, what makes one amino acid different from another amino acid then? It's whatever else is attached to this carbon. You see, they call it the, they just call it R. R means variable, which means different amino acids have a different thing for R, a different group for R. Uh, and depending what, on what R is, um, you have the different amino acids. Again, R means the variable group. It also means the side chain. And that's what makes the 20 amino acids different. I'll give you an example. If we have H here for R, if R is H, that's the amino acid glycine. If we have CH3, that's the amino acid alanine. If we have CH2, SH, CH2, SH, that's the amino acid cysteine. And I could go on and on. Basically, you see here, whatever R is, whatever this little group is attached to my amino acid, that's what makes it that particular amino acid. The rest of it's called the backbone. It always has the carboxyl group, the amino group, alpha carbon and a hydrogen. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go into more details about what makes a protein, but hopefully this was a good intro, good primer for you. Again, like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.